So I'm going to walk through basically the hardware architecture for the latest platform. So, so as you mentioned, for you, and um, these are some of the design goals we had to start with. Um, higher MTDL. Um, we try to achieve that with smaller fault domains and higher service, higher serviceability. Um, we're also looking for higher performance and higher performance density. Um, yeah. So you can, as you can see with the for you there, um, trying to lim limit the number of drives per compute node. So we have in that sort of in that chassis there, each of those slots are four, and I'll go to the next slide. Higher disk density, um, 15 drives per compute times four, 60, 60 per chassis. Um, and for the F800 specifically, that's 1.6, 3.2, and 15.4 terabyte SSDs. Um, the other thing we're looking for, industry standard components and trends, um, Ethernet backend. Previous Isilon platforms was primarily um, infinite band. Um, Vault-based cardless NVRAM, so in the older platforms we had um, NVRAM cards. Um, the journal in this case is in system DRAM. Uh, Ethernet backend, can you tell us what speed and? Yeah, I, I'll touch on it in, a, in, a minute, a, in okay. another slide. Um, and then three per day, three write per day SSDs and 4KN drives. And of course, no single point of failure and basically trying to create a forward looking um, platform. So at a chassis level, so four nodes in a chassis, um, they are, we treat, so the left two and the right two as a this concept of peers. Um, what is a peer? Well, they share power regions. So each of those have a single power supply, but the, the peer, the two of them together, um, create a power region of itself. So if one goes out, the other one will keep, keep it powered. As also for the peer concept, um, there is the, there's a PCI link between both of those nodes that we're using for mirror journal. Um, and that's, so that, for the mirror journal, you have another copy of the journal on the other node and you have your own local copy. Okay, can I get it with, you've got two node pairs? Yep. Can I get it with a smaller introductory version of one node pair? Um, yes. Okay, that so is I can build it, I, I can buy it half full. So uh, to achieve the minimum protection levels, you need at least three. Three? Three nodes okay. to, uh, with the current, uh, right. So with three nodes with the uh, previous platforms. Mm -hmm. But in this design, because you need node pairs, the minimum now becomes four nodes or one for you chassis. Okay, so you do need the full chassis. You need there. that to start with a pool or a mm -hmm. cluster, and then you can increment in okay. node pairs, so two okay. nodes at a time. Correct, yep. And the node pair is a requirement because it gives you the protection on the journal and- And the mirroring. Power region. Yeah. Correct. And um, like I said, journals on system DRAM, so that's also um, battery backup for Vault operations. So on the front side, we have um, drive sleds. So there are five drive sleds, five drive sleds per compute, 20 total. Um, in the F, case of the F800, three two and a half inch SSDs per sled. Like I said, 1.6, 3.2, and 15.4. Um, the file system layout is aware of the sleds, so. Um, so a given file uses one drive per sled, and we have this concept of um, being able to service a drive without actually causing any sort of unavailability of that sort. <clears throat> so um, each sled is cabled with a flexibility to it, so when you pull it out to grab, say, the last SSD, the one that's gone bad, mm -hmm. you're not bringing down that entire sled. You, the, when, uh, the operation of, of replacing a drive or pulling a drive that will suspend those drives, but the data that was on there is not on a well, sure, it? sure, it's non-volatile, but um, do, when, when you pull a sled outward to, mm -hmm. to grab one of those disks, yep. that sled is or is not still connected to it? Oh, it's not connected, it's, it's not connected. Okay, so it disconnect, it, yep. it is a, a hard connection to the back plane yep, it's, rather than a cable. Correct, okay. yep, so you, you pull it out, you'll swap it and you put it back in. And at that point in time, when you do pull it out, the drives go into a suspended state, and mm -hmm. you kind of can move forward. And um, with the sled design, given that you can completely pull it out, it's not attached. Um, there is this concept of you know it's it's future proof for any other sort of flash media that we want to support in the future. 
Um, Compute node, that's a exploded version of the compute node. Um, the CPU, it's Broadwell based, 16, core, 16 cores, 32, 32 threads, um, 2.6 gigs. Um, DRAM, 464 gig, DDR4. And similar to the SLEDs, um, it's, it's modular by design for future proofing. So if there was a new CPU SKU that we wanted to you know, release or drop in, um, you should be able to get that into a compute node and then replace it in as, an, as part of an upgrade. So what is the, um, uh, are you using in the, in the ISLA in the same way as what uh, your colleagues are doing in Unity, meaning that you can uh, continuously upgrade? For example, you buy an ISLA and you can continuously keep upgrading it, for example, adding new, uh, new CPU modules, yep. new features, and so on? Yeah, that's, I, th I think that's, that's the intent of why, you know, why it's built this way. So, you know, a year down the line, two years down the line, we have a different compute that we can drop in. If you want better performance, that's mm -hmm. something that you should be able to drop in um, that can just go in here. Okay. Right, so if you look at, for instance, our previous generation, they were, the entire box, you know, you had the storage, the drives you could pull from the front, uh, but the CPU and all that was really built inside the box. So if you want to replace anything, you have to replace the entire box. Yep. This design actually has the drive sleds on the front, the compute modules on the back, and these are module in that you could actually pull out the compute module, yeah. pop in a new one, and you've upgraded your, your compute capabilities. So maybe it's not exactly your scope, but seeing that you're doing that with Isilon, that your colleagues are doing that with Unity, is this a trend which is going to be implemented going forward in EMC for the whole range of products? This kind of modularity, I you know? Can't, I can't speak to whether or not all of Dell EMC is going to do that, <coughs> but I think what you're seeing is we all recognize that there is a need for more flexibility and agility. Right? Because we have seen customers who buy a system uh, and then find out that their workloads are actually more demanding than, than what they'd expected, or they, they need to grow more uh, quickly mm -hmm. than expected. So we want to give customers this ability to, to, uh, to move with their workloads. And the, and the connection between the sled and the controller uh, is SAS, or 6 gig SAS, 12 gig SAS? I think it's 6, and you can support 6 and 12. On the, the mid plate supports 6 and 12. It just, I guess, it depends on the drive, I think. We, we also have some platforms with SATA on yep. the So, F800 specifically, yeah. Yep, SATA, SATA, support those. Okay. Um, for network fabrics, um, this is one of the questions I was asked earlier. So, front and back end, they're independent fabrics. Um, from the front end side, we support 10 gig and 40 gig. Um, for F800, I think we recommend 40 gig, but if the lab infrastructure doesn't support it, 10 gig is also supported. Um, and front end is primarily for client traffic, so it's separate from our back end. And on the back end, we have Ethernet, so that's 40 gig for new, for new clusters, and then we have a set of switches that we support. And then InfiniBand is also supported if you want to join any sort of legacy clusters that um, only support InfiniBand. So, summary for the hardware platform itself. Um, some of these. So some of the, the back end and the front end network are separate and segregated. Is that? Yes. Please. Correct. So, in summary, um, from the earlier slides with the design goals, um, you can see that you know the higher MTDL, the higher performance, and higher performance density, density are things that we achieve for, along with um, meeting some of the industry standards with Ethernet back end ballless NVRM, and then, of course, the being able to look, you know, deal with anything in the future with. What's a vault-based cardless NVRAM? So the, so in older generations, we had a specific NVRAM card that went in. Um, in this case, the journal is actually in the system DRAM. So there's no NVRAM card itself, it's just, System DRAM, and then the battery backed, or yeah, it's battery backed? backed. It's battery backed. Well, what the, the whole note, node is battery backed, and in the event of loss of power, what we do is we effectively reboot the node into a low power state, depower the sleds and the Ethernet and everything else that we don't need, and push the journal onto a dedicated um, M2. And, that too, yep. and then on when that power does come back. It, yeah, it restores M2 to system DRAM, and then um, you've 
Storage Journal.